Hi everyone, this is Elder Bill with Christ the Ark of Salvation Ministries, and I want to thank you for joining us at the Ark. Today, let's talk about violence. Webster defines violence as the use of physical force so as to injure, abuse, damage, or destroy. It goes further. It says violence is an intense, uh, turbulent, furious, and often destructive action or force. Another definition says, violence is a behavior involving the use of physical force intended to abuse, damage, or kill someone or something. I contend that we deal with violence daily. The violence of temptation. Oh, come on, Bill, really? Yeah, no, no, understand. Temptation is a violent act. James breaks it down for us. It gives us the anatomy of temptation. Check this out. In the 13th verse of the first chapter, James says, uh, uh, let no man say when he is tempted that he is tempted of God. And almost with an indignation, he goes, God cannot be tempted with evil people. And he doesn't tempt anyone. And the 14th verse, he says, you're tempted when you're drawn away by your own lust and enticed. However, when you look up the word that they use for drawn away, it's uh, ex elko, the Greek word ex elko, which actually means drag away, dragged away. So we're dragged away by our own lust and enticed and entangled. All right. And then in the 15th verse, it says, and when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin and sin brings forth death. So let me get this straight. First, we're dragged away by lust. We're abused. We're entangled. We're abused. And then lust conceives a child. That child is sin. OK. And when lust finishes abusing us, he passes us to sin and sin abuses us. And when sin finishes abusing us, he passes us to death to kill us. Wait a second. Doesn't that sound a lot like that last definition of violence? The use of physical force intended to uh, uh, hurt, damage or kill someone or something, I'm telling you, temptation is a violent act. No wonder when Christ taught the disciples to pray, he included and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Oh, come on, consider this. Why else would Paul say, uh, 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 when I would do good, evil was always present. The good that I would, I do not. That which I would not, that's what I do. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Paul understands that this is a violent act. This is a violent act. But let's look at this gang of thugs we're contending with. First, we've got temptation, the snitch. Yeah, that's what temptation is. It tells lust that we're ready to be abducted. All right, it's the snitch. Then you have lust, the kidnapper and abuser. Then you have sin, the violator. And then you have death, the murderer. But there's a problem. Who's the mastermind? Who is the mastermind of this gang? But Paul lets us know that in Romans, the seventh chapter. He says it in the scripture. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? That's right. The mastermind is our own body, our own flesh nature. That's the mastermind. But why? Why has our body betrayed us? Because when you became a believer and you began to walk with Christ, you became its enemy. Romans, the seventh chapter, Paul tells us uh, uh, that in this flesh dwells no good thing. Jesus told us that it's what comes out of us that defiles us. He said out of our heart comes adulteries, fornications, uh, uh, thefts, false witness and blasphemies. 
I mean, but what would you expect? It was born in sin. It was shaped in iniquity and it hates God. Our flesh, our carnal mind, our fleshly mind is enmity, hostile, an enemy to God. And guess what? Since you became a believer, who dwells in you? God. But, but understand, not just that, but we're now heirs to God and joint heirs with Christ. In other words, everything God has is ours. So consequently, the goal of our flesh is to separate us from our inheritance. You got that right. We have been sleeping with the enemy this whole time. Whoa, our flesh is the mastermind of this violence. We've been sleeping with the enemy this whole time. That's a lot to take in. Whoa, yeah, yeah, I'd be discouraged if I didn't know about the contingency plan, you know. Um, oh, wait a minute. I didn't tell you about the contingency plan, did I? Yeah, God put a contingency plan in place. It's laid out in Romans the eighth chapter in the first verse. It starts with, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There's a whole thing here. Let me read you the rest of it. It says, uh, um, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit yeah yeah that's the contingency plan uh, let, me, let me read it to you there, there, there's a second part and that's found in Isaiah the 54th chapter in the 17th verse yeah, it says this, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against us in judgment, we shall condemn. This is the heritage, the inheritance, the heritage of the servants of the Lord and the, their righteousness is of me and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. That came directly from the mouth of God. All right, look, uh, let me leave you with this. Temptation is a violent act, but we don't have to succumb to it if we walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So keep fighting, keep resisting the enemy and he will flee. That's my time. And I'll see you next time at the ark.